Hey guys, welcome to another week of ABA with Vic. First, I would like to start by thanking you for coming into my YouTube channel, subscribing, and learning more about ABA. Before we start with this week's topic, go ahead and click the subscribe button. This week's topic is punishment, positive punishment, and negative punishment. Now, I really want to highlight that in ABA, we do not use punishment. I'm making this video so that you guys are aware about what is punishment and how it is used to decrease behavior. If you're a behavior intervention is working for an ABA company or agency, please do not use punishment when working with individuals with autism. In ABA, we do not use punishment as form of teaching. Now that we got out of the way, I want to define what is punishment. The sole reason of punishment is to decrease behavior. Last week, we were talking about the three-term contingency, and this rule also applies to punishment. Punishment is delivered or taken away after the behavior in the consequence. Once again, the three-term contingency is the antecedent, the behavior, and the consequence. Punishment is usually given at the consequence state of the ABC. Let's remember again what is the three-term contingency. The antecedent, which is before the behavior, B, the behavior itself, and C, the consequence. And in this case, for punishment, it is given again after the behavior in the consequence. There are two types of punishment, positive punishment and negative punishment. Let's remember what positive and negative means in the world of ABA. Positive is when you're giving something, and the negative is when you take away something. Once again, for punishment, we are working in decreasing behavior. In the case of positive punishment, let's say you're having dinner with your family, and then one of your children begins screaming. Now, you want to work on targeting the behavior of not screaming during dinner time. An example of positive punishment is giving a child a chore. What you could do is tell the child to wash the dishes, for example. For positive punishment, you want to give something that is not reinforcing to the child. Typically, children do not like to wash dishes, so in this case, we will have the child wash the dishes because this child was screaming during dinner. For this case, we're working for the child to decrease the screaming during dinner. In a sense, you're giving something to the child to decrease the behavior. You're giving the child a chore. Now for negative punishment is when you take away something. We're going to use the same example as the previous one. Let's say you're having dinner with your child and then suddenly your child begins screaming. Now to decrease the behavior of the child screaming, you could use negative punishment, which is taking away something. You take away something that is reinforcing for him. This could be, for example, an electronic device. You could take away a cell phone, a video game, or a TV. By doing so, you are continuously working on the child not screaming during dinner time. Another example of negative punishment is having an individual coming past curfew time. And you want to use negative punishment. The way that you could do this is taking away something reinforcing. Maybe you don't let the child go out again. In essence, you're removing the child from going outside, which is the negative part of this punishment. And by taking away something in this negative punishment, you are decreasing the likeliness of the behavior from happening again in the future. Another example of positive punishment is when a child is disrupting class and a teacher or professor gives the student detention. By providing detention, you are hoping that the child does not interrupt class again in the future. This will be an example of positive punishment. You are giving the child detention in order to decrease the likeliness of the interrupting from occurring again in the future. So again, for this week we learned about punishment, positive punishment, and negative punishment. Once again, I would also like to point out that in ABA, we do not use punishment. Therefore, if you are a behavior interventionist or working for an ABA company, I encourage you not to use punishment to teach an individual behaviors. I would like to remind you guys that in ABA, we use reinforcement, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement, but we do not use punishment. Once again, if you have a question, you can leave me a comment down below, or you can email me at abawithvic at gmail.com, or you can tweet me at twitter.com slash abawithvic. And as always, thank you for watching.